Hello students, let's do data handling exercise 26A, page number 268. Question 1. Marks scored by 30 students of class 6 are given as below. So we've been given some data here and this is called the raw data. These are observations that are taken, collected as a result of some kind of study or research. So looking at this, we're going to answer a few questions. Question one is the highest marks scored. We have to state the highest marks scored here. Now let's begin by looking at all the marks from the first one. So we have 38. Now 46 is greater, so I can strike off 38. So I can strike off all those in 30s. So let me go ahead slowly. Now here I find 63. So can you see there is 63 here? That means even the 40s are smaller. So I can strike off 40s also. So 46, 45, let me leave 63. 53 is also smaller. 40, now I found 85. That means even 63 is smaller. So all numbers smaller than 85, let me strike off. So 52, 75, 60, 73, 62, 22. Now, if we find something greater than 85, we'll stop. So everything smaller than 85 is striking off. 63, 43, 45, 33, 47, 41, 29, 43, 37, 49. Now here there's an 83. So it's still smaller than 85, so strike it off. Then 44, 55, 22, 35 and 45. That means... 85 is the highest mark scored. So let's write our answer there. 85, that is our highest mark scored. Let's go to the next question. The lowest mark scored now. Now when we went through the numbers, we saw some numbers in the 20s, isn't it? So let's look for those 20s. So in the first row, we have 122. In the second row, let's go slowly and we have found 29. And at the end of the row, there is a 22. That's it. So these are the numbers that are the smallest among these. Now, which among these three is the smallest? The 22s are the smallest. So we can take off the 29. So the smallest number here or the lowest marks scored is 22. Now we've been asked to find the range of marks. Range of marks we find by subtracting the highest marks and the lowest marks. So this is how we find the range. Now, the highest marks are needed for this. The lowest also are needed for this. So the highest mark scored was 85 and the lowest mark is 22. Now let's subtract 85 and 22. 5 minus 2 is 3 and 8 minus 2 is 6. So the range of marks is 63. Question 2. For the following raw data, we have to form a discrete frequency distribution table is what they are asking us. So this is called the raw data. Raw data is data that you get as you observe things, as you study, whatever uh, data you get, you write it down. That is called raw data. Now raw data has to be arranged. We have to organize it. So here they are asking us to draw a frequency distribution table. Now, the first step to form the table is to draw a table with three columns. So, let's do that. So, here we have three columns and in the first one we write marks. Then we have the tally marks and the frequency. Now, the first column marks depends on your question. You can change the title accordingly. But the second and the third columns will remain the same. There will be no change in that. Okay, so this is the first step. You make three columns, marks, tally marks and frequency. Now, in the second step, what you do is, in the first column, you write all the marks from the lowest to the highest. So, we start with the lowest marks and then we go up to the highest. So, let's look out for the lowest marks. 30, 32, 32, 28. Okay, let's see if there's anything smaller than 28. 34. So let's go ahead and see if there's anything smaller than 28. Okay, so in the first row, there is nothing. The second row, there is a 28 again. And there is a 28 again. And there's one more 28. Okay, so 28 is the smallest. So let's begin by writing 
the smallest first. So 28. Then we have 30. So 30. Then we have 32. So as you can see, they are all going up in twos. 32. Then we have 34. Then that's it. We don't have anything greater than 34. If the numbers are repeated, you don't have to repeat it in the marks column. That is why we are having the tally marks. So now let's begin. Let's count and see how many 28s are there. So this is the first one. Let's strike it off. As you do that, you can draw a line here, a slightly slanting line or you can draw a vertical line. So we have one line there to show that there is one 28. Now let's go ahead and see if there are any more 28s in the first row we don't have. In the second row, we have one more. So let's put one more tally mark there. Then again, we have one more, one more tally mark. Then we have one more. And so we have four 28s. So the 28 has been repeated here four times. Now frequency is the number of times this marks has been repeated. So that is based on the tally mark. So how many times do you have? One, two, three, four. So the frequency is four. So we finished with 28, let's go to 30. So we have one, so let's put a tally mark there. One, then we have one more, I'm going in the first row. Then there is one more. Then there is one more in the first row itself. Then in the second row, we have one more. Now, when you have the fifth one, you don't put a line across like this. Instead, you will draw a line diagonally so that it cuts all four lines. So this is a bunch of five. We call it a bunch of five. So the fifth tally mark is drawn diagonally across all four lines. So there's one more here, 30. So I'm going to start another bunch. Then there is 30 again. So one more. And then there is 30, one more. Now this makes it easy for us. If there are many slanting lines, it's going to be difficult to count. Now it's easy to count. The first bunch is five and the second bunch is three. So 5 plus 3 is 8. So it's easier to count when they are in bunches. Now let's go to 32. Okay, so 1. So as you see, you keep putting a tally mark. There's one more. Another tally mark. The first row, there's one more. A tally mark. Again, there's one tally mark. Now there is one. There's a fifth one. So put it diagonally across to make a bunch of 5. Now let's go to the end of the first row, again, we have 32, so there's one. Then there's another 32, one more. Second row, there's 132. Then again, there is another one. And there is one more, so this makes it another bunch, another bunch of five. So that's it, no more 32s. Now it's easy to count. We have five plus five. So we have 10 of 32. Now 34 is the one left. So let's see, we have one. So let's draw a tally mark, two. So one more tally mark, then three. That's it. So we have three, 34. So the frequency there is three. Now let's find the total. Total of all this. Let's see how much this is equal to. Four plus eight is 12. 12 plus 3 is 15. Then I put one, 5 and I carry 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. So now let's count and see if we have 25 marks there. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Then 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. So our total is correct. We have 25 numbers. We have not missed out anything. So this is how you put raw data into a frequency distribution table. And this is called discrete because it's finite. The numbers are definite and it is clear. Question 3, we have to define what data is. Data is the number that's collected. All the what you see, all the observations, they are called observations. And these observations which are put in the form of numbers is called data. Frequency of observation, as you saw in the table, is the number of times a particular observation occurs. 
So we count how many times it occurs and that number is called the frequency of observation. Question 4. Rearrange the following raw data in descending order. So we have raw data. Now let's look for the greatest number. Descending means from big to small. So let's begin this question. Descending order, let's look for the greatest. 5.3 is greater than 5.2. It's greater than 5.1. Now we have 5.7. Okay, let's see if there's anything greater than 5.7. 5.6 is smaller. 6. 6 is greater. Now let's see if there's anything greater than 6. Okay, 5.5, 5.9. Now we have 6.1. 6.1 is greater. Then we have 5.5, 5.8. 5.7, 5.9 and 5.4. So 6.1 is greater. I think this is the greatest number here. So let's write that down. 6.1. 6.1 is greater. Now let's look for the other 6. We had another 6 there. 6.0 or simply 6. 6.0. Okay. Now what will come below that? We have 5.9. So 5.9. Now do we have another 5.9? Let's look and see if we have more 5.9s. Yes, we have one more here, 5.9. So let's write that down, 5.9. Do we have any more 5.9s? No. Then we have 5.8. So let's write down 5.8. Any more 5.8s? Yes, we have one more 5.8 here, 5.8. Then we have 5.7. So let's write down 5.7. Then we have another 5.7. So let's write it down. 5.7. Then the next one we look for is 5.6. Okay, here we have a 5.6. So let's write that 5.6. Then uh, do we have any more 5.6? No. So we have a 5.5 here. So let's write that down, 5.5. Then we have another 5.5, 5.5. Now let's go to 5.4. So we have 5.4. Then we have a few numbers only left now, now that is 5.3. So 5.3. Then we have 5.2 and 5.1. So we have covered all the numbers, right, and we have arranged them in descending order. Now, then write, they are asking us to write the highest value. Highest value will be the number that we started with, isn't it? Because we are writing in descending order, we put the biggest number first. So the highest value is 6.1. And then the lowest value is the last number that we wrote. So that is 5.1. So 6.1 is the highest and 5.1 is the lowest. Now we are asked to find the range of the values. To find the range, we always have to subtract the highest value and the lowest value. So the highest value is 6.1 minus 5.1. So let's do that subtraction. 6.1 minus 5.1. 1 minus 1 is 0. We put the point. 6 minus 5 is 1. So the range of values is 1, 1 1.0 or simply 1. So we've got all our answers. We've got the highest value 6.1, lowest value 5.1 and the range of values is 1. Now question 5. Represent the following data in the form of a frequency distribution. So we have to draw the table. So the first step is make three columns in the table. So the three columns are marks tally marks and frequency and then we have to arrange all these numbers in ascending order from the smallest to the biggest. So that's the first thing we need to do. Let's look for the smallest number. So we have 52. Now let's see if there's anything smaller than 52. We have 48. 48 is smaller than 52. Anything smaller than 48? No, I think 48 is the smallest. So let's begin with 48. So 48. So we finish 48. What's the number that comes after 48? We don't have 50. We have 52. Then we have 
56, we wrote 52, then we have 56. Then what is higher than 56? Let's look. After 56, what is the higher one? 56, we don't have 58. We have 60. So let's write 60. So the next one is 60. Then what do we have higher than 60? We have 68, but anything else before that? 64, we have 64. Yes, so we can write 64. So 64 and then we saw 68. Okay, so I hope you've covered all the numbers. Now let's see if there's anything higher than 68. So 52, 56, 72. We have a 72 here. So let's write down the 72 also. So we are writing 72. So that number also we have written. Now let's begin. Now we are going to see how many times each number is occurring. Now let's look at 48 first. So the first row we look at 48. We have a 48 here. So that's 1. So let's have a tally mark 1. Then we have one more here. So that's another tally mark. So 2. That's it. We have only two 48s. Now let's go to 52. We have 1. So put the tally mark. Then again we have one more here. So one more tally mark. Another 52. One more. One more 52. Again, carry on the first row. We don't have any more. Second row also, we don't have any more. So we stopped. Now let's look at 56. In the first row, we have one. So one tally mark. Then we carry on in the first row. Again, we have one more. So one more tally mark. Then one more. So put that. Don't miss out anything. There's one more towards the end. That's four. That's it. We have only four. 56. Let's go to 60. Now 60 in the first row, we have 1. So put the tally mark 160. There's one more in that same row. So that's one more. That's it. We don't have any more. Now the next number is 64. So 64, let's look for 64. In the first row, we have towards the end, we have 1. Then in the second row, we have 1. And in the second row itself, we have one more. That's it. Now let's go to 68. 68 in the first row, there's one. Again, there's one more, two. Then there are, there's one more. So let's put the third tally mark. Now that's it. We have only three. Now what is left is 72. So we have 72, one. Is there any more? Yes, we have one more, 72. And that's one more. So we put all the tally marks. Now let's see if, if, if we have covered all the numbers. Yes. Now let's count and write the frequency. So 48 occurs two times. 52, 1, 2, 3, 4, four times. 56, four times. 60, two times. 64, three times. 68, three times. And 72, two times. So this is the frequency. Now let's find the total and see whether we've got all the numbers. 2 plus 4 is 6. So I'm doing this. 2 plus 4 is 6. 6 plus 4 is 10. 10 plus 2 is 12. 12 plus 3 is 15. 15 plus 3 is 18. 18 plus 2 is 20. So our total is 20. Now let's see if we have 20 numbers there. Let's count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Yes, so our total is correct. So we have not missed out any number. So we have represented the given data in the form of a frequency distribution table. So we'll stop with this for now, children. In our next video, we will continue with the remaining questions. Thank you, children.